Hi, for this recording, I'll try to explain the proof of a theorem which connect group action and group homomorphism. This can be found in John Farline's text 16.3 theorem. Let x be a G set, that means G x on x. The first statement is for each element g of the group g, the function sigma g from x to x defined by sigma g applied to x is equal to g cap x for all element x in the set x. This sigma g is a permutation on x. Second statement, the map phi from G to S of X, which is the set of all permutation on X, defined by phi of G equal to sigma of G is a homomorphism. And third, I will try to show you what is the kernel of this homomorphism. Let's look at the first statement. The function sigma g from x to x defined by sigma g applied to x is equal to g cap x is a permutation on x. Why is sigma g applied to x equal to g cap x is a permutation on x? How do we see that? To see this, it must show that sigma g is 1 to 1. So what does it mean by sigma g is 1 to 1? Let's look at the working. I want to show that sigma g is 1 to 1. Say, suppose I have sigma g on x1 is equal to sigma g on x2. Now I want to show you x1 and x2 must be equal. Then I show that sigma g is 1 to 1. Then I also show that sigma g is a permutation on x. But what is sigma g applied to x1? That is g on x1 must equal to g at on x2. Then, what is the next thing we're going to do? Well, g at on x1 belong to the set x. g at on x2 also belong to the set x. We now apply g inverse at on g at on x1. And apply g inverse at on g at on x2. And then we must have left hand side equal right hand side. Then according to GA3, group action XM3, says that the left hand side is equal to G inverse compose with G at on X1. And the right hand side is also G inverse compose with G at on X2. But G inverse composed with G is E. So E and on X1 must be equal to E and on X2. But according to GA2, for uh, identity element of G acting on X, I must have E add on X1, E cap X1 is X1. E cap x2 is x2. So we conclude that sigma g is 1 to 1. That means that sigma g is a permutation of x. So sigma g belongs to x, x. The set of all permutation on x. Now let's look at the second statement. 
the max phi from g to s sub x defined by phi of g equal to sigma sub g is a group homomorphism. But why is this a group homomorphism? We know certainly g is a group. How about s sub x? s sub x is a group consists of all permutation of x. And the group binary operation is the product of permutation or composition of permutation. Now, we must interpret what does it mean by this phi of g defined by sigma g is a group homomorphism. What does it mean? It means phi of g1, g2 is equal to phi of g1 times phi of g2. But then, what is phi of g1, g2? According to the definition of phi, this is sigma subscript g1, g2 and phi of g1 is sigma g1, phi of g2 is sigma g2 and you multiply them. But what does it mean the left hand side and right hand side equal? It means that apply it on any x inside the set x, the image must be equal. So let's look at left hand side, what does it mean? Left hand side is sigma g1 g2 x. This is by definition g1 g2 multiply x on x and that is left hand side. How about right hand side? The right hand side is sigma g1 composed with sigma g2 applied to x. Since this is a composition or function, so you must apply sigma g2 to x first, then apply sigma g1. But then sigma g2 applied to x we know is g2 cap x. Then g2 cap x is inside the set x. Apply sigma g1 to g2 cap x will be g1 cap g2 cap x. Now look at the left hand side and right hand side. Are they equal? It looks different. However, if you look at GA3, good action XM3, we know that G1, G2 multiply cap x is equal to G1 cap G2 cap x. So from here, we know that the left hand side and right hand side are actually equal by GA3. So that means going backwards, I have sigma g1 g2 x is sigma g1 composed with sigma g2 to x and that means phi of g1 g2 will be equal to phi of g1 times phi of g2 so let's put them all together this is how the proof look like show that the mapping field g equal to sigma g is a group homomorphism the proof will look like this for all g1 and g2 in g x in x we know that g1 g2 multiply together cap x of g1 cap g2 cap x here by g a3 that means that sigma of g1 g2 applied to x is equal to g1 cap sigma of g2 x since g2 cap x is sigma g2 x here then apply g1 cap sigma g2 x is sigma g1 applied to sigma g2 x so from here we conclude that sigma of g1 g2 x is equal to the composition of sigma g1 and sigma g2 applied to x and this is true for all x inside the set x that means that sigma g1 g2 is equal to sigma g1 composed with sigma g2 so that means phi of g1 g2 is equal to phi of g1 
multiply the field of G2 where the group operation here is the composition of function. Therefore, phi is now a group homomorphism. So, we know phi from G to S sub X given by phi of G equal to sigma G where sigma G applied to X equal to G cap X is a group homomorphism. Then what is the kernel of phi? Let's n be the kernel of phi. Then by definition of kernel of phi, these are the element g inside the group g such that phi g equal to identity e. E is identity map in SX. And if we continue, what does it mean by phi of g equal e? So this means that using the notion of map means sigma g must be equal to e. And what does it mean by sigma g is equal to e, it means for all x that for all x there sigma g applied to x is equal to e applied to x here for all x in the set x now and this means sigma g on x will be g cap x and e applied to x e is actually the identity map so e will map x to x and we know that the kernel of a group homomorphism is a normal subgroup of g now